although I've sent myself into exile, I'm still doing essentially the same things as before. Do you still have any questions for me before we start our investigation? One of my former subordinates told me that this title has its origins in a strange incident. The Academia has long exiled mad scholars to Aru Village. A mysterious phenomenon exists here. When mad scholars first arrive, they are as incoherent and deranged as before. But, after spending some time here, they invariably begin to calm down. Initially, the people of Aru Village greatly resented having to take in the mad scholars. But a strange incident one night changed that. Aru Village was struck by the strongest earthquake in living memory. Seeing buildings on the verge of collapse all around him, the then chief of the village was preparing to take everyone to safety. Suddenly, he noticed a mad scholar crouching in a corner, caressing the ground with his hands. A soft, green light radiated from him, like a divine glow against the backdrop of night. Despite the powerful tremors that ripped through the ground that night, all the houses remained upright, almost as if they had grown roots reaching deep into the ground. In the end, not a single building collapsed, and no one was hurt. After that, the people of Aru Village treated the mad scholars with greater kindness, and began to refer to them as the village keepers. The soft green light? A mad scholar protecting Aru Village? Hmm... What do you make of it, Traveler? Paimon thinks so too. Actually, Sino, do you know if any of the mad scholars continued to wear their Akasha terminals at Aru Village? In theory, they would continue wearing them so the Academia could still monitor their activities. With that said, the main Akasha system would no longer have any interaction with them. Oh, no wonder! Everything makes sense then! Add in the fact that they calmed down, it was probably Nahida who calmed them. If you are able to draw a conclusion from this one story alone, then it appears you possess much more information than I do. So, what do you make of the story? Really? Lesser Lord Kusanali. <laughs> what? You don't believe us? Lesser Lord Kusanali was definitely using the Akasha to give her power to the Mad Scholars! No, it's not so much that I don't believe you. I'm just struck by your reasoning. Lesser Lord Kusanali, the current Dendro Archon, is she really active in Sumeru? The Academia has always placed far greater importance on the late Greater Lord Rukadevata. They've more or less ignored Lesser Lord Kusanali, and I've never had any reason to doubt their views. In addition, I've never heard any stories about Lesser Lord Kusanali and her deeds. To me, she might as well have been a god that never existed. No way! Nahida definitely exists! She's a... How should Paimon put it? She's a good Archon who's kind and wise. Even if she says weird stuff sometimes. I've spent many years interrogating criminals. So I can easily tell when someone is lying. Good! Then you should know that we're telling the truth! That look in your eyes. <laughs> I've never seen that from a liar. You two really must have met Lesser Lord Kusanali. How can this be? To think, our Archon has been amongst us this entire time. Alright, now it's our turn to put our skills to good use for this investigation. But easier said than done, especially since we don't have any leads. Hmm, maybe we can start by knocking on some doors. Excuse me, are you here to help me find my grandpa? Huh? Who are you? By the sounds of it, a resident of this village. My name
name is Isak. You'll help me find my grandpa, right? Is your grandpa a mad scholar? Hey, don't say that. Grandpa is just grandpa. Why do you have to call him that? It's not like he's a bad person or anything. Hmm. The person you're referring to is not a local. Yet you are. Why do you call him Grandpa? Grandpa is just Grandpa. He's my family. I, I heard everything you said to the village chief. Please, you gotta take me with you. I, I wanna find my Grandpa. I, I swear I'll help. I won't be a nuisance. Ah, so you're the one who was eavesdropping on us around the village chief's house. I was planning to go out and take care of whoever it was, but I had a vague feeling that they didn't harbor any ill intent. Whoa! Oh, Haven wasn't kidding about Matra having sharp senses. Sino, he's just a kid! All he wants is to find his grandpa! Let's find a way to help him! Sorry, I was only listening in because I wanted to know where grandpa went. Honest. If you don't believe me, you can ask Miss Candace. All right. But first, let's confirm the facts with Candace. Sino is super vigilant. Is this what all the Matra are like? Ah, you're back already. We just wanted to confirm something with you. Do you know a boy by the name of Isak? <laughs> I had a feeling he'd go looking for you. You knew this would happen? Yes. Although he tried his best to stay hidden, I still noticed him eavesdropping outside the window. He really wants to get his grandfather back. Isak's parents were both Aramite mercenaries who rarely returned to the village after finding employment in the city. He was raised by his grandfather. Unfortunately, it was only a few years before his grandpa passed away. Isak was still very young at the time, so various families in the village took turns caring for him so he could survive. Later, an elderly mad scholar arrived at the village. Isak thought the scholar bore a striking resemblance to his grandfather, and thus often spied on the man. However, the scholar was unkempt in appearance and incoherent in speech. Although Isak referred to the man as his grandpa, he was afraid and didn't dare to approach him. One summer night, the oft-mumbling and bumbling grandpa suddenly calmed down and seemed to become more lucid. He even noticed Isak hiding in the distance. So grandpa walked up to Isak and patted him on the head. He even took Isak to the entrance of the village, where he patiently taught the boy the names of the stars and accompanied Isak until he fell asleep. The next morning, Isak woke up and wanted to go find his grandpa again, only to realize his grandpa no longer recognized him. However, even so, grandpa retained his calm expression. It's said that those who saw the scholar claimed he no longer appeared to be crazy, but appeared to be living in his own world, almost as if he were sleepwalking. Isak was thrilled that his grandpa was able to find peace 
and would follow him all the time, asking him things like, Grandpa, want me to take you somewhere fun? Or, Grandpa, could you tell me stories about the stars again? All this somehow just makes Paimon feel really sad. It seems like they both deserve so much better. Perhaps. Nearly everyone who lives in the desert has some form of hardship or regret. But even so, we must still continue on with our lives. It's also my reason for fighting. I must continue to protect this land. Hmm. <sighs> Maybe the people have always had a considerate god watching over them. Huh? What did you say, Zaino? No, nothing. As long as Esau keeps his word and doesn't get in our way, we can take him along. Perhaps you are more compassionate than I gave you credit for. Please accept my thanks on Esau's behalf, Zaino. Let's ask the local residents some questions first. Village keepers? Oh, let me think. When I was eating dinner the other day, I saw one of them by the side of the road, muttering away and eating mushrooms and tree roots. They shouldn't go around eating that kind of stuff. Uh, okay. Um, did you notice anything else? Anything else? Hmm. No, I think that's all I have to tell you. Sorry. The scholars that have gone missing, have you seen them? Ah, those eyes, those fierce eyes, you, you look like a real fighter. Don't change the subject. R right, you were asking about the vi I mean, the mad scholars. I think it's been a few days since I last saw them. 
I usually go to bed pretty early, so I'm not too familiar with what goes on at night. But honestly, I feel quite sympathetic towards them. Even though they act a little strange, they've helped me in the past. If it weren't for them, my house would have collapsed long ago. Do you also think Grandpa and the others are good people? Grandpa? Oh, hello there. It's little Isak. You mean that nice man who looks like your grandpa's long-lost twin, right? <laughs> he was actually the one who protected my house. I saw it with my own eyes. He happened to be staying near my house that day and was doing something with his hands on the ground. It still feels pretty surreal now that I think back on it. Did someone teach them how to do that? Well, whatever the case, I'll always be thankful to him and whoever taught him to look out for others. I'm pretty sure that if I ever went mad, I wouldn't be able to do anything like that. Gotcha! Thank you! Grandpa recently? You know, the one who likes to sit and space out near the village entrance. Oh, well, if it isn't Isak. Oh, your grandpa, huh? Hmm, it's been a while. The last time I saw him, he was pacing out by the road as usual. I went and asked him if he'd like any of the food I had prepared, despite my wife's protests. Like many people, she's really quite terrified of them. <sighs> and speaking of my wife, she's still always complaining about how I don't make enough mora. That might explain why she's always mad at me. Oh, thank you. Thank you for taking care of him. <laughs> it was nothing. Hey, you're looking for him, right? Did he go for a walk and get lost? Yeah. <sighs> That's no good. Well, once you found him, Come by my place again, and I'll cook a little something for the both of you. I've known you since you were very young. So as far as I'm concerned, you're family. Please feel free to come by any time. Wow, what a nice guy! Okay, thank you, sir. Huh? Don't say anything for now. Hmm. Isak, stay here. Let's head over there. Stay quiet as you move. Listen, see if you can make out what they're saying. Have you heard? The mighty King Deshret, the sovereign of our faith, will soon return to this world. Yes, of course I have. King Deshret is the one and only true ruler of this land. I've never believed in any other gods. Still, you say he's coming back, but it sure doesn't feel like life's about to change around here anytime soon. What's your proof? Haven't you noticed? The village has been getting more deranged scholars than ever. Delavar was saying that many people also went insane just before the fall of King Deshret's civilization in ancient times. We don't quite know why, but it seems like there's some sort of connection between insanity and King Deshret. Isn't it a sign of King Deshret's power that all the mad scholars have disappeared? If you ask me, they must have been chosen as the final sacrifice for King Deshret's resurrection. Huh. Now that you say it, that does make some sense. <laughs> does this mean our lives are finally going to take a turn for the better? Exactly. Those city folks will get what's coming to them. Now, repeat everything you've just said from the very beginning. Huh? Who are you? Uh, where did you come from? My patience is running thin. 
You heard what I asked. Yeah, B bro, this guy's something else. Just look at his eyes. One wrong move, and he's gonna flay us alive. Let's not get on his bad side, okay? I am no match for this guy. Oh, okay, good sir. W what is it you would like to know? Tell me about King Deshret's resurrection. Well, I... I only know a few things from hearsay. I went for a drink the other day, and heard others talking about a rumor that the madmen will disappear, and that King Deshret will return to this land. I'm not making this up, I swear! <sighs> hey, go on, keep talking. It's true. It's all true, sir. We desert folk have had more than enough of those people at the Academia. They keep sending us all their mad scholars and won't let us have a good life. Would you want to live like this if you were in our place? The Radicals were even more thrilled than me when they heard the news. We're all praying for King Deshret's speedy return. Delavar also said that once King Deshret returns to our side, it's only a matter of time before we conquer the land on the other side of the wall. They're all willing to serve under King Deshret and fight for a share of the glory. Is that so? Uh, seems like he still wants to know more. Keep talking. Ah, uh, got it. I, uh, at first, I told myself it was just the drink talking. But then all the mad scholars vanished without a trace, just as the rumors said. P please don't beat me up just for mentioning these rumors. I if I'm guilty, then everyone else around here is also guilty. I'm just saying what the others said. The people here really like King Deshret, but dislike the Dendro Archon. Where is this radical person you talked about? I haven't run into him over the past few days, so he probably hasn't been around the village. What about you, man? Have you seen him at all? Uh, no, uh, not at all. We wouldn't dare lie to you. He's really not here right now. Sounds like you're not too close with the Radicals. Uh, no, uh, of course not. All we know are their names. I have many ways to stop you from talking. And many others to stop you from sending warning messages. So you'd best just stay home and hope I don't hear of you trying to contact anybody. Don't do anything until I've gotten to the bottom of this. Try something foolish, and even Candace won't be able to protect you. Yes, yes, got it. We'll do just as you say. <sighs> That's Kerbaimon half to death. Sino is pretty terrifying. Hmm. He didn't try to reassure us at all. It's like he's used to hearing that. Oh, Paimon bets lots of people have told him that before. I heard that. <laughs> Sorry. It's part of being a Matra. The rumor we heard just now seems like a strong lead. But we need to check a few more places. Very well. Isaac! Uh, I am here! Where's your grandpa's house? I can take you there. Just follow me. Grandpa? Oh, he likes to be alone. Uh, sometimes he stares at the sky in a daze and... Other times, he just pokes at the ground with his fingers. Every now and then, he yells out at the top of his lungs, so a lot of people are really scared of him. But he's a good person, really. I know he is. I swear, he, he's just like my real grandpa. Grandpa usually stays. There sure isn't much here. 
No. Incense? Uh, please don't say it's the same one as before. But are you okay? Are you getting dizzy or need to lie down? There's a scent that you can sense, but I can't. A certain traveler here once passed out from that smell. Thankfully, Tainuri saved the day! And then he gave us a long lecture to explain all about how it worked. So, you know Tainari. Huh? You know him too? Are you two friends? Yes. Hmm. Now that I concentrate, I can also make up the scent of incense. Wait, surely Tainari didn't lecture you too? No. No need. Did you first encounter this scent at Tainari's house? In the forest. From a scholar. Hmm. What are you looking for, Sino? Here it is. Take a look right here. Uh, Paima doesn't see anything. Although the traces have been completely buried in the sand, there are footprints here. From the size and shape. They belong to an adult male. This pattern is a common one from this area. Local shoes. This was probably someone from the village. The scent is quite faint, but still extant. The footprints head in the direction of the door. But who would come looking for Grandpa? He doesn't have any friends. We'd have to ask whoever lured him away with the incense. Huh? So you can lure someone away with just a scent? Hey! What's wrong with liking good food? Everyone's got something they love in life! Exactly. Most scholars are fond of incense since the smell supposedly helps them clear their minds and discover new knowledge. Even deep within the clutches of madness, they still yearn for their knowledge-seeking days, and will follow the scent whenever it presents itself. No... Grandpa... So, someone's taking advantage of their weakness? Huh... Still, why would anyone want to abduct all the scholars? Are the rumors really true? Could the disappearance of all the mad scholars have something to do with the radicals? It's highly likely. Please, you have to save my grandpa. Grandpa's never done anything wrong. Please help him. Sounds like we'd better help get him back. Don't you worry, Isak. We won't let whoever took him get away with it. Let's head to Aru Village and inform Candace and the others about what we learned here. After that... We'll set off to find the scholars. <laughs> 